Hey there, mamas. My name is Laurel, and thank you for joining us back here at the Mom Desk Club. Welcome to my desk, my real life desk. And I am really excited to jump into season three with you. We are talking all about work and wiggles, being a mompreneur with toddlers around. It's quite the circus, let me tell you. And it's near and dear to my heart because I have been through this season of being a work at home mom with toddlers four times now, getting ready to go on number five next later in the year. <laughs> and it is a rodeo. It's always something new, something crazy. They're always up to something new. Toddlers are so busy and they're fun and they're adorable, but they are busy little people. So today we're going to talk all about how to toddler proof your workspace. I think this is going to be really fun. It's going to be really helpful for you. And I'm going to get to share a little bit of my uh, well-earned, very long work at home history and give you some ideas along the way on what I have learned and how I can help you with some of my experience as being a work at home mom with toddlers and getting my desk all set up in such a way that it doesn't cause quite as much stress as it could. First things first, let's talk about your desk. There are so many different options for ways to work at home and really there's no right or wrong because it just kind of depends on what is best for you and what works with your lifestyle and your home and all of those different things. I have had a plethora of different work at home environments. Some of them are desks. Sometimes I worked on my laptop. There are pros and cons to each of them. And so we're going to kind of just dive into what makes your desk a suitable work at home desk, especially when you've got toddlers around. I think that it's very important to at least have a spot where you can dedicate your work. So whether this is going to be your kitchen counter or whether you're going to have a desk, find something that is going to be really helpful for you. Now, one thing I did learn as a work at home mom is position is key. So I have always, almost always had my desk here in this corner, but at one point I used to have, I used to face this way. I had my desk here and then I had another piece of a desk over here and I faced the wall. I'm going to tell you right now that that was a terrible, terrible idea. As a work at home mom, please don't ever face away from your children. You need to be able to have your eyes out. So what you can't see in this space is that in front of me, but behind you, is a completely open area. This is where my kids play, it's where they eat their lunch, it's where they eat their snacks. I have since moved my desk arrangement where I twisted it and now I am facing out. And it is so much more helpful because I can be sitting here typing, I can be sitting here working, and I can easily just look up and scan the space, see what people are doing, see who's having problems, see who needs help. It makes a lot, see who's missing, okay? Let's be real. There's always somebody who's doing something they're not supposed to, and you gotta kinda keep an eye open for them. So, positioning your desk in such a way that you get good visibility is so important. Another thing that was really helpful for me was that we have a big TV on the wall, and we put our security cameras up on that. So when my kids are outside playing, I can actually turn the TV to face my desk and I can watch the security cameras while they're playing outside. Crack a window, I can hear them, I can be watching them. It's really helpful. So think about your position and this is gonna be stuff that you're gonna figure out along the way. So don't feel like you have to figure all this stuff out at once. But as you're open to flexibility, it's gonna help. Positioning of your desk is going to be key. But the desk itself is also going to be a really important. Depending on your toddler's age, you may want a sit to stand desk. I intentionally picked out this desk because this whole side of it can raise up and become a standing desk. It's super helpful for me, especially when they're babies, to have a standing desk option because then you can put them in a baby carrier, you can be standing there bouncing while you're typing, and having the standing option is super helpful. If you don't want to invest in a completely brand new desk, which I completely understand, it took me a long time to even get to a spot where I picked out a desk that I really liked, then you can also buy, I had a weird sound. <laughs> if you don't want to buy a whole brand new desk, you can buy just a sit to stand addition for your desk. So if you've got a big enough workspace, you can buy this thing that sits on top of your desk. You can put all of your monitors and your keyboard and everything, and then it will raise up. That way you can convert your desk to a sit to stand desk if that's something that you think would be really helpful for your lifestyle. So those are just a couple things. Honestly, you're gonna be able to work with just about anything. Originally, I had an old desk that I'd had from back in high school that I was using for a really long time. It wasn't super practical, but it did the job and it was solid. 
um, had a lot of drawers, which was kind of a downside because then my kids were opening the drawers all the time. But you can make these work. So thinking about your desk, where you're gonna put your desk, how you're going to position your desk, those are gonna be really important as part of toddler proofing your work at home space. I think one of the things that people don't really think about until you get into it is that when you're working at home, you're not just toddler proofing your desk. You actually end up having to toddler proof your whole home because the more things that aren't toddler proof, the more times you're having to get up and go intervene. You know, the more times they're getting into cabinets they're not supposed to or they're getting into something. So if there's any way that you can set up your space in such a way where the area is toddler proofed, that's gonna be really helpful for you. So think about your desk, think about your space, think about what's gonna be really helpful for you as a work at home mom and what's gonna fit your lifestyle and what's gonna fit your schedule. So another thing that you can keep in mind as you're toddler proofing your work at home space is creating a space that is going to be easy for your children. So I always like to think of boundaries as a frame. You know, you've got this, this framework and everything in the frame is good to go. You know, it's all comfortable, it's fun, it's easy going, it's not filled with a lot of boundaries, it's not filled with a lot of reprimands, but there is a boundary that keeps children safe. It's important to have boundaries. And so I think that that can be implemented as a work at home mom. So when I very first started working from home, I actually worked in an office a couple days a week and I took my daughter with me. I had my own office area, I had my own desk, they had it all set up for me so that she could take her naps in there, we had a box of toys in there, there was a TV so that she could watch movies. You know, it was all set up for her, but the best part was that I brought a baby gate, put it across the door, kept my door open, and that would keep her in. So finding a way to contain toddlers is really important. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to just contain them in a playpen, that's not, it's not gonna be big enough unless you can get one of those really nice play yards, but even then, at some point, they're gonna start to get bored of that. Um, there are a lot of solutions, though, when it comes to containing your toddler safely. So you can buy gates. I know I, at one point, worked for a company and she brought her children to work with her and one whole half of the office basically became the playroom area and they had this big gate, they blocked off this huge section, tons of room for the children to play, areas for their toys, all that kind of stuff. So you can invest in these large gates that can block off whole areas, you can work in that side, you can work outside of that so that they're not getting into your stuff. There's a lot of different options and a lot of different flexibility and I think that's something to keep in mind as a work at home mom is you're going to have to think outside the box because this isn't normal per se. People generally choose to stay home or go to work. Being a work at home mom is kind of a weird environment because there's no rules, but that's the best part. There's no rules. You get to decide what works best for your family. And even though you have to think outside the box, I know you're gonna be able to find something that works really great for you and your child, keeps you safe, keeps them safe, keeps everybody happy and productive and it's very doable. So that would be my next tip is just trying to make sure that you're creating a space for your child to enjoy their day, whether that means that you're sectioning off something or you're going into a room with them or maybe you keep your office, depending on where your office is, depending on where your desk is, you know, you're gonna have to think through all of these steps. And I think the biggest tip as you're thinking through these steps that I didn't realize until after I'd had a couple kids was to always be thinking ahead. And obviously you're not gonna know what your children are gonna be getting into two months down the road, but if you can think about where they're going next, so maybe they are younger and they're crawling right now, well you know walking is the next step. And I'm telling you right now, when they start walking, it becomes a whole new ball game because they are all over the place, they're getting into things, they might slow down for just a little bit while they're starting to figure out how to walk, but then it opens up a whole new realm of possibilities because they're falling, they're bumping their heads, they're tripping on things, they can reach things. So when they couldn't reach on top of your countertops before, now they can. I remember it was so funny when my baby was first learning how to walk and he had just learned how to pull up on things. All of a sudden, I'd be sitting here working and you'd see these little hands creep up over the edge of the desk and then you'd see his little head peep up over the top and he was so proud of himself and he was just so tickled that he could see up over the edge of my desk. But that also meant that he could now reach on top of my desk. So nothing was safe, nothing was secure. I had to actually go ahead and figure out how to clean everything off so that he could then peep over my desk and grab everything off the edges. 
So that's another thing to keep in mind as you're preparing your space for working from home with a toddler, you're gonna have to kind of think about where they're going next. Is, is walking the next phase? Is reaching the countertops the next phase? How can I get ahead of this so that um, things aren't taking me by surprise? But the fact is, they're just gonna kind of take you by surprise because you don't know what to expect until you get there and then it's like, oh, this is new. Okay, let's change this. <laughs> One of the things I also did as um, a work at home mom and kind of toddler proofing my space was I keep a drawer specifically dedicated just to some kid toys. So it's down, it's got easy access, they can easily open it. It was super cool at first, it got super boring afterwards once he realized that it was no longer exciting and it just had his toys in it. He's like, meh, this is no fun. Um, and he was back to my stuff again. But <laughs> um, keeping a drawer that's dedicated just for them can really help especially for moments when you're in a pickle like you know you're on the phone and they're starting to get upset you can open up the drawer and they're like "Ooh, what's in here especially if they've kind of forgotten or if you switch the toys around a little bit that can be something that can help I don't think you have to convert your whole office necessarily into a playroom although you can and I'm sure that could be really helpful um, but you definitely don't have to but having certain aspects of your desk that can um, help distract them in different moments can be really helpful Okay, now I'm going to get into some of the more um, nitty gritty details of child proofing your office space. Things that maybe you've thought about or some things that maybe you didn't think about and you're like, oh, that's a really good idea. I need to take care of that. So this is gonna be more of just really practical details, not fun, not fluffy, just kind of basic, kind of solid, but they're gonna be really helpful for you, especially as you're just getting into work at home mom like life if you haven't been working from home before or if maybe you've been working from home but they're a baby and they're not quite ready to become a toddler yet these could be really helpful for you because babies are super easy in the fact that they don't go anywhere <laughs> for the most part once they become mobile it opens up a whole new world one of the first things that you're going to want to think about is cord management the thing about office spaces is that there's always tons of cords whether it's for computers printers chargers all those different kinds of things there's always lots of cords so you're going to need to figure out a way to keep these cords contained not just because it's aesthetically pleasing <laughs> The worst thing that can happen is when your child comes up and grabs the back of your computer and yanks on a cord and unplugs your computer right when you're in the middle of something. I've had it happen before. It's no fun. You're better off trying to figure out a way to manage cords so that your kids aren't going to get access to them because it's just part of it. They can't help it. They're really attracted to cords, especially, I don't know if you've found this, you probably have already, especially if they're mobile, but cell phone chargers, they love them and they wanna chew on them, which is totally not safe and not something that should be happening. So figuring out a way to organize your cords can really help when you're a work at home mom. Another thing that you can utilize is childproof locks, especially if you've got lots of drawers on your desk that you have things in it that you don't want your kids to get into. There are multiple different options for childproof locks. Some of them are really easy to install. Some of them take a little bit more um, effort to get them installed and ready to go. Um, you can get the kinds where you like push down and pull open. Those are kind of like your standard childproof locks. Those have been around since I was a kid. They work great up until your child is about 18 months, maybe even a little younger. At some point, they're gonna figure it out. I have watched many of my children open up a door, figure out what's holding it, and then figure out they can push that little button down and open up their door, which completely doesn't help. <laughs> childproofing, if it doesn't childproof, does not help. There are also some nice magnetic options, which could be really nice for a desk, especially because you can keep the magnetic key up out of reach where they can't reach it, but you could easily reach it from your desk because the last thing you wanna be doing is having to stand up and go get a key so that you can unlock your drawer. That's not practical, but if you could keep your key up out of reach from the child, away from your computer because they're magnets. I think, do, ma do computers still operate off magnets or am I completely showing my age? Because I remember growing up, we were supposed to always keep magnets away from computers. It was a really big deal. That might not be a thing anymore. <laughs> um, so child-proofing your drawers and getting locks and different tools like that can be really helpful. It saves you some sanity so that you're not constantly having to clean up the messes they make when they open a drawer that you don't really want them getting into. Another tip is to elevate your electronics. This sounds overkill, I get it, but thinking about the position of your electronics is really gonna make a big difference as a work at home mom. 
in saving you from some interruptions. So one of the things that I've run into before, um, and one of the reasons that I didn't turn my desk even sooner, was that I was concerned that my kids were going to pull my computer monitor over onto themselves. Now, it's not something that we've run into, and I definitely have a couple different fail safes in place um, to keep that from happening, but definitely consider that, because if a toddler can do it, chances are they're going to try it at some point. They're very curious, they're very cute, but they're very curious and they can get themselves into a lot of trouble. So consider where you're putting your electronics and make sure that they're safe. Another thing that you can consider when you're thinking about your electronics is keeping them up high enough where kids aren't gonna be able to knock stuff over onto them. I have had many a thing happen to my laptop where my kids have dumped glasses of water on them and that was really tragic. The worst was a glass of lemonade, but I kind of think I'm the one that did that. So I can't blame my kids for that one, but that one was awful because then the keys were all sticky from all the sugar. So don't, I highly suggest you don't do that. Um, and there was even one time I was sitting on the floor working on my laptop and my little guy was not very old at the time and he picked up my jar. It was empty, thankfully, but then he chucked it at my monitor on my laptop and shattered it. So keeping your electronics up and out of the way is going to make a big difference only to keep you from having to constantly be uh, running and trying to catch things and catch them and grab things and grab them and keep things from falling apart. Another thing you could invest in are some desk edge protectors. This goes without saying as to why you would need them. Although let me be real as a mom of four kids and having gone through this work at home mom phase with toddlers four times now, I actually have never purchased a desk edge protector. I figure they are going to learn how to manage their head and the edges at some point, and um, we might have a couple bumps along the way. But luckily, by the time they would be tall enough to hit their head on the edge of my desk, they really aren't falling all that often. So, you know, just kind of weigh out the consequences, but that is a tool that you could utilize and that could save you a headache, or them a headache. <laughs> Another thing to keep in mind is that you can secure your furniture. Now, this can be a big deal, especially if you have lots of bookcases in your office or big filing cabinets that have a lot of paperwork in them. Securing your furniture to the wall can make a really unsafe space feel a lot safer. Um, kids are totally prone to opening drawers and climbing on top of things. They can't help it. It looks like a built-in set of stairs. But filing cabinets falling on children would be a really big deal. So you can get special little tools that will secure that kind of furniture to the wall so it's not going to fall over on your child. I know it might feel like overkill and you probably don't have to do it, but it could save you some anxiety um, in the cases that you end up with a climber who wants to climb up your bookcases and up your filing cabinets. Okay, this is one that maybe you haven't thought about yet. Maybe you have, or if you haven't, you're going to think about it. But locking the screen on your computer. So I have my computer password protected, not because everything on it is so confidential that I don't want anybody finding out, but because the last thing I need, and I have the timer set to like a minute, my computer sits idle for one minute, it locks down, password goes on, only because I've got the little toddler who comes and reaches up over the edge of my desk and starts beating on my keyboard. So locking, either finding a way you can lock your keyboard, I think, but it's super easy to just set up your computer to go down into lockdown mode after a minute. And then sure you have to type in your password every time you come sit back down, but it's a whole lot easier than coming back to sit down and finding your monitor screen has been completely flipped because they hit just the right keystrokes to turn your monitor, your monitor screen upside down. Like I'm serious, this has happened. There was something else that one of my kids did one time when they hit on the keyboard and it was super frustrating. I don't even remember what it was, but it was just, it was, they hit a combination of keys and it like locked the keyboard and it locked the keystrokes. And I'm just saying, locking your, locking your monitor will save you so many headaches because they love keyboards. They can't help it, they do. Another final, one of the final things that's gonna really save you a lot of headaches is just child-proofing your office for things that you don't want your kids getting into. So at one point I had a small jar of pens that I kept on my desk and I kept all my pens all in that jar and I would only keep the jar down within access when I was sitting at my desk and then I would pick the jar up and I would put it up somewhere high where they couldn't get to it because at the time pens were a really big deal. My kids would climb up on my desk, they would steal my pens and then next thing you know they have gone and written all over walls. This was obviously when they were really, really tiny. We don't run into that nearly as much as they get older and learn that they're 
not supposed to write on the walls, but there for a while, that was a really rough season and they were constantly coming and stealing pens off my desk and paper clips and all those kinds of little things. So find a way to child proof your desk in a very practical way, keeping your paper clips in child proof containers, maybe even break, fruit, break proof containers where they could shake it. You know, if you need to give them something when you're on the phone, you can give them the jar of paper clips because there's no way they're gonna be able to open it. They're gonna shake it, they're gonna have fun with it, but at some point they're gonna get bored and then you can just put it back on your desk. Um, you also want to get your standard child proofing tools, outlet covers and um, different protectors that are gonna keep them from sticking their fingers in the outlets or anything like that. So standard child proofing that you're gonna use in your home, you're also gonna use at your office. Um, and it's gonna be things that you're not really gonna even think about until you get into the middle of it and realize, oh, my kid is climbing now and now they're on top of my desk and the paper clips are not in a safe place like I hadn't really considered until now. <laughs> All right, I think that just about covers it. It's not as complicated as it might sound. It's not as hard as it might sound. If you have a couple of well-placed toys that you think they're really gonna love, stash a couple of snacks in your drawer just in case you're in the middle of an emergency and you have to be able to distract them with something. That always goes over well too. If you wanna make your space super child-friendly, you can get little furniture and you can get really fun activities and you can always keep a drawer of brand new activities that they've maybe never seen before as a way to kind of keep things exciting and keep things new. But really, the basics are you want to keep your, sa your space safe. You want to make sure that it's going to be a place that they're going to be able to not get into any trouble, but still have fun. And really, when it comes right down to it, you're going to have to learn how your child interacts with your space and you're going to adjust for that because every kid is different. I've, you know, some of my kids never get into hardly any trouble. They don't get into stuff. They listen when I tell them no, and they're really easy to work with. Other kids are climbing up the cabinets and dumping paper clips everywhere. Like that's just kind of part of it. Every kid is different. And so some of the things that might work for me and my family may not work for you and your family or where I might have to completely over child proof my house. You may not have to do hardly any child proofing. It's gonna be different for everybody. But I hope that some of these tips have been helpful for you. I hope that you're able to child proof your work at home mom space and make it a place where both you and your child can make many happy memories. I hope it's reassuring to you because I also went to work with my mom as a child and I have some wonderful memories of that season. So it's not something that was stressful or overwhelming or that I look on with any kind of regret. I had a lot of fun and I know you and your child are gonna have fun with this too. So I hope you drop your comments down in the video or on the podcast, share what's working for you, share this magical, amazing tip that you found that really helps child-proof your space. And also make sure you follow some of the links below because I'm going to create a guide with all of the links to all of the child-proofing tools that I know and love and some that I don't even use but look really helpful and would have really saved me a lot of stress had they been around back at the very beginning. So make sure you follow the links down below and you can get that free guide sent right to your email. I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you get a lot of work done today, but more importantly, I hope you make some memories and have fun with your kids. Bye. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today at the Mom Desk Club. I hope you got some great tips out of this and I'm really looking forward to connecting with you and figuring out what works for you as a work at home mom for child proofing your space. Make sure you come back and join us next time because we are going to talk all things naps and work at home mom. How to get naps, how to get your kids to take naps, how to build your space so that it is comfortable for your kids, how to have the right tools in place to keep them taking their naps, and so on and so forth. So I really look forward to joining you next time where we discuss all things toddlers and nap time as a work at home mom. Bye.